just me. Hello. Uh, let's talk about You Win and Charisma. Disaster Radio's 2011 album. Motivated by uh, lots of other electronic music. Made in a bedroom. Um, lots of things to discuss. So this is the opening track on Charisma. It's track one, You Win. We're starting out with some uh, basically 80s synth pop Devo, Devo stuff. Note the five claps. Well, there's four. This kind of idea. These repeated notes are kind of dorky and computery, computery and uh, mechanized. Um, and we're sort of trying to unite a bunch of different um, disparate electronic music existences. So this sets you up for a wacky lead sound. So this section and this melody, um, I think of this melody as quite sort of 60s camp. Um, there's a little turnaround that happens. I'll play it on the keyboard. Um, there's, there's, there's two sections. Section one. Then section two dropped. One tone, two semitones. But yeah, for me, that that uh, lead sound is kind of, uh, I'm trying to clash already at the start, in the first moments of the record, this uh, sort of 60s uh, cartoon melody, uh, inspired mostly by the Simpsons theme by Danny Elfman, which he himself was going for like a 60s sort of Hanna-Barbera throwback type um, sense, on top of this sort of 80s beat. these kind of rich sort of new age well almost um oberheim obxa van halen jump patch and already these strange sound effects layers That's a children's toy that came with a puppet show with all these sound effects on it. It had sample music and um, nature sounds and door slamming and people laughing and, and that sort of thing. So I sampled that off. And that may show up again on the record. I will have to remind myself. And then these sort of weird tone generation parts coming up. And then a whole bunch of bonus stuff underneath the singing section, which we will get to. So just still still functioning on those two same notes there, the, the uh, E and D natural. Quite a static opening, and then it blossoms out. Still quite cheeky. So we have this uh, double tracked, almost sequenced uh, recreation of a Korg M500 SP brass sound. It was a preset version, I think basically of the Korg MS20. A lot of them made it to New Zealand. I don't know whether that's a weird circumstance that a whole bunch of this one 
Corgi M500, Corgi M500 SP micro presets and got to New Zealand, but there are a lot of them. I used to tour with one and then I got a replacement one and there would be people coming up to me after the show saying, I had one, I have one of those. So one of those little curiosities could be something to do with uh, the import taxes uh, in the 80s. Uh, so this portamento octave jump. And this, uh, a lot of MIDI notes, but once it's uh, run through a synth that's monophonic with portamento, you just get a tone drop. And these uh, these drawn in MIDI effects show up all over Charisma as a form of like fill or uh, to build energy, an accent um, previously, or in, in the eyeliner records, I might use a harp glissando in the same way. So stepping down through a scale, but these are a lot more drastic and a lot more of a kind of controller type to produce one sound effect rather than a more sort of musical um, idea. But you can do this in the in the VST world, no problem. It will just do a little cute little uh, squeaky toy sound effect. Then we got a doorbell. Truly cartoon, a truly cartoon moment. I'm just being a troll here. So this section is just a bunch of multi-tracked um, falsetto vocals, probably an AKG C3000B that I was borrowing off my friend. Quite, quite woolly and lo-fi, badly comped. You don't hear it in the in the um, final product. And a build section to get to another build section, which we will get up to. But also of note, underneath this is basically a whole other weird uh, quote-unquote avant-garde. Um, synth part that I will just solo off if I can be careful and not click the wrong button So that's from listening to like a lot of Morton Sabotnik and um, even watching bands like Golden Axe in New Zealand and um, yeah, add into X, uh, this kind of avant-garde synth school, um, placing that up against a kind of cartoon music makes it sort of idiosyncratic enough for, for me to give, give me something to chew on. So, oh, you're just, you're just combining like uh, electronics late 60s texture electronic music with uh, cartoon music and 80s new wave you know that's that's it's that simple then we go to this climb if I don't have it on loop here we go Yeah, so the, the climb, oh, apologies. Welcome to the wacky world of using automation curves to produce sound. Now, these two parts have automation curves for a test tone. They are quite piercing, so I'll keep them at low volume, but there's no audio going into this at all. It's just the effects.
so yeah, that this I um idea I came up with um just using plugins uh on blank audio tracks to produce um waveform tones. And there's actually there's quite a lot of cool zippering um effects that'll come up later on with that idea that uh you have a quantized pitch that will um have some great little digital artifacts so i'm looking for a lot of um little tidbits that come out of the woodwork when you do strange things with digital audio <laughs> So we have this big climb going to the climax of this bow. And then this sort of point of rest. And a church bell, dog bark. In this you win vocoder section. Now, you win, you win, you win, you win. The original idea was that, um, apologies for the cars honking outside in beautiful Kowloon. The idea for this was that uh, I had a Texas Instruments speak and spell kids toy and it has a quiz mode or some sort of challenge mode where it has a great sound effect of this saying you win. You win. Um, and I think that was the original idea behind the whole thing was that I could take this the timbre of this is quite pleasurable. This you win, um, and I built a song around this this idea of winning. Um, all of these are bussed out to to different software vocoders, and they're all stacked, and flipping between different channels. So there's one of me doing my own voice. You win. 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 And they're all vocoded. This is Analog X Say It, which is an old uh, freeware utility to do speech synthesis. So yeah, we're kind of stacking up this this vocal idea between between synthetic vocals, electronic vocals, and real vocals. Merge through the idea of vocoding and across the album auto tuning. Then the solo. Recap to the cartoony singing bit. So it kind of it busts down the door and it's a whole bunch of sort of wacky characters coming in and out, a lot of bunch of wacky sounds and uh it's it's like welcome to the show more kind of track one type stuff you can hear the zippering that i was discussing only moments ago at the end the idea that this apologies you can hear the you can hear the pitch breaking up as the control rate is an audio rate so you instead of hearing like a a smooth pew, you're hearing kind of a and these are the things that I like. This is what I like. Um, it could be down to quantization on the um, on the control rate. Could be could be quantization on the um, the UI rate itself. Apologies again to your ears, but uh, this is where we were at. <laughs> So 
So yeah, the, the, the solo kind of breaks up the whole tune. Um, it sort of exemplifies the noodly, wacky part of the original melody. Then we get back into the uh, the main section and then a little bit of an explosion and then we're out into something different. Um, things that would have be coming up later for me would have been this, um, this pad track has a little sort of quasi eyeliner I learned to do these crescendos with inversions and um, stepping up this kind of uh, grandiose slow fanfare thing. I would end up using that on eyeliner records a lot. Um, and just interesting to have this kind of more seventh textures underneath something that's quite sort of obviously very diatonic non non sevency dog barks are just dog barks through contact four Split between the channels. These uh, percussion hits are an MDEC PCK100 uh, percussion synth, which has like a, a square wave modulator. These are four stacked and spread across the channels, but we'll just solo one off. It's got a really ni nice um, waveform, nice and soft. So that's like your dub effects, Coron DS7 um, tone generator type. Um, disco toms, those sorts of things. Uh, it's a, but it was a little kit that I bought on uh, second hand that no one had finished um, assembling and built it and it still works. Um, and these would have been sampled years before but I just had a little sample library of things ready to go. Woobles, just some weird synth. Synth one playing a, a sine wave through a MDA dub delay. So yeah, the the whole record um, sort of exemplifies uh, what I like about a lot of electronic musics um, and sort of tries to tie them all together, not in a nostalgic way, but in a way that sort of views history with contempt to sort of say like, you know, it's all the same sort of thing. I'm not trying to be necessarily retro or nostalgic but just trying to draw from something with deep sort of fascination um, and without sort of restraint um, So one big, one big mistake I made on this whole record was that um, none of the synths at all have been detuned against each other. So everything is locked to A440. I didn't realize you, that you can, you can just get a better mix if you have different synths set to different global tunings. You know whether it's whether it's through the um, the global master tuning on something or whether it's um, effects or, or, or something like that so yeah my, my biggest uh, regret was not um, not detuning the synths against each other to create a kind of more rich phasing especially in the, the upper mids top end everything's locked to A440 everything falls in phase and um, a bit of a missed opportunity because there's so much stacking of just the same material you can hear this SFZ organ and then a Vox Continental sample underneath it. Generally, you'll have a lot of, on this record, a lot of parts that are being played by two synth, synths at the same time. Sort of using one, duplicating one MIDI channel and using it as 
in this kind of more modular domain to say like, well, give me this and give me give me a CSAD lead sound and then give me the default patch from synth one and just keep throwing stuff at it till it becomes more rich. And uh, a lot of use of default patches. So this is the default um, first setting for synth one. This is this uh, great little um, plugin that everyone should know. Um, yeah, this is going to show up on every track. This uh, wonderful little workhorse. So yeah, the default patches, 80s new wave, um, 60s avant-garde synthesizers, 60s lounge riffs, um, sound effects, video game sound effects, vocal treatments, pushing the vocal through a technologicalization with the vocoder and auto-tune stacking merging the voice with the machine but in a really fun way and having fun with it not being not being serious but being sincere So that's you win. <laughs>